Thank you for joining us at Hope Church. We are so excited that you came across this message and are tuning in. If you're joining us for the first time, I want to be the first to say welcome to Hope Church. Do us a favor and text NEW TO HOPE to 94090. After you hit send, you'll get an immediate response from our team with a link to a short form for you to fill out so we can do just that. Well, enjoy the service. This weekend, I think the majority of people are all thinking about the same thing. What is on the forefront of our minds this weekend is the fact that we are saying goodbye to 2020 and giving a warm welcome to the brand new year of 2021. And as we transition to a new year, I want to begin by asking you a question. And here's the question. What do you want the most in 2021? What is it that you want the most in 2021? Now, for some of us, we've already made a list of exactly what that is. For others of us, we'll be making that list over the course of the next week. But I thought about a few maybe common responses to a question like that. For some of us, we would say that what we want most in 2021 is an all-expense-paid vacation to recover from 2020. (laughs) Amen. For some of us, we would say that what we want most is a vaccine for COVID-19 to circulate the general public. For others of us, we would say that next year what we really want is greater financial security. For some of us, we would say that what we want most in 2021 is for kids and students to return to full-time on-campus education. That gets an amen. For some of us, we would simply say we want the freedom to shake hands with other people and it not feel awkward. We desire to walk up to somebody and give them a hug without having a second thought. Those are some of the things that we may want in 2021. But I want to ask you this question in a little different way. What do you need the most in 2021? It's one thing to say that you want it. It's a different thing to say that you need it. What is it that you want the most in 2021? Well, the short answer is that what we need more than we need anything else is God himself. And what I want to do for a few moments is I want to share with you two unique ways that we need God as we move into a brand new year. So if you have a copy of the scripture or access to the scripture, I want you to look at Psalm 96. And I'm going to read the first three verses of this passage from the Old Testament. Psalm 96, verses 1 through 3. If you don't have a copy of the scripture, we're going to put these on the screen for you so you can follow along as we read. Here's what the Bible says. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day. Verse 3. Tell of his glory among the nations, his wonderful deeds among all the peoples. So what I want to do out of these verses is not ask you to make 35 New Year's resolutions tonight. I want to share with you two things that I believe we need as we move into a new year. And both of them come right out of this passage in Psalm 96. Two needs we have for a new year. And here's the first one. We need to pursue deeper intimacy 
with God. As we move into a brand new year, one of the things that we need is we need to pursue deeper intimacy with God. In his book, Simply Jesus, Joseph Stoll wrote about an interaction that he had with the great preacher and evangelist who is now in heaven, Dr. Billy Graham. I want you to read what Joseph Stoll wrote. He says, my wife and I were seated next to Dr. Graham at a dinner for the staff and board of his organization. Billy, 80 at the time, was lucid and interesting. Wondering what he would say about his highest joys in life, I asked, of all your experiences in ministry, what have you enjoyed the most? Then, thinking I might help him out, I quickly added, was it your time spent with presidents and heads of state? Or was it, before I could finish my next sentence, Billy swept his hand across the tablecloth as if to push my suggestions onto the floor. None of that, he said. By far, the greatest joy of my life has been my fellowship with Jesus. Hearing him speak to me, having him guide me, sensing his presence with me and his power through me, this has been the highest pleasure of my life. And then Joseph Stoll concludes by saying, it was spontaneous, unscripted, and clearly unrehearsed. There wasn't even a pause. Even as I read that to you today, everything inside of me says, that's what I want in my life. Such a passion to pursue intimacy with God. I share that as a reminder that when all of the dust of life settles, the ultimate pursuit of life is really knowing Jesus. And I believe the heart of the conversation between Dr. Graham and Joseph Stoll is the same heartbeat we find in the opening verses of Psalm 96. And I think there are a few characteristics in the first part of this text that reveal to us how we can pursue God in a way that leads to intimacy with Him. The first characteristic that I believe we see about a right pursuit of God is this. Our pursuit of God must be personal. Our pursuit of God must be personal. Look at the first section of these verses. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Now you'll notice in this first section of the passage, we see the same phrase repeated three times. Sing to the Lord. Now I want you to notice what these verses do not say. These verses do not tell us to sing about the Lord. They don't say to sing for the Lord. These verses say to sing to the Lord. Now, obviously, there's nothing wrong with singing about him or singing for him. But there is nothing like expressing our personal love and worship directly to the Lord. And that can look, look a lot of different ways. That could look like being in a service like this and singing with hundreds of people praise and worship to God. But it can also look like you or I sitting alone in our living room having an intimate conversation with the Lord. Regardless of how you do it, there is nothing like expressing our personal worship and affection directly to the Lord. You see, Christianity is not a cold, dead religion. It is a relationship through which we personally experience the very life of God. And I know that to be true, and that's the testimony of many people who 
are a part of this service. But even though I know that, there's something else I'm well aware of. And that is, it is very easy to go through the motions when it comes to public and private worship. It's easy to attend the right events, to sing the right words, and do the right things, yet none of those things actually leading us to a deeper, personal, intimate walk with the Lord. Henry Blackaby wrote this. He said, many people have grown up attending church and hearing about God all their lives, but they do not have a personal, dynamic, growing relationship with God. And I believe this principle here in Psalm 96 about expressing our worship personally to the Lord leads us today to ask a very hard question. And here's the question. Am I pursuing a personal love relationship with Jesus or am I simply going through the motions? Because in 2021, we don't need shallow spiritual activity. What we need more than we need anything else is to pursue deeper intimacy with God. And pursuing the Lord personally is not simply acting the part. It's not simply saying amen at the right time. And it's not just carrying your Bible around campus. The essence of pursuing Jesus is a genuine love relationship that is cultivated by personal fellowship with him and worship offered to him. Think about this. God desires a personal relationship with you infinitely more than you will ever desire a relationship with him. Think about that. What an overwhelming reality that God desires a personal relationship with us infinitely more than we will ever desire a personal relationship with him. What a reality. What an invitation. What a truth. But in verse 1, we see more than just we are to sing to the Lord. Verse 1 tells us we're to sing to the Lord a new song. Now, as I have looked over this passage the past few days, that has been a interesting reality to think about. You see, as you walk in a personal relationship with God, he will continue to reveal more of who he is to you and bring new life to your worship. I love the way that Henry Blackaby or Warren Wearsby writes about this principle of a new song. Here's what he said. A new experience of God's blessing. A new truth discovered in God's word. A new beginning after a crisis or 2020. A new open door for service. All of these can make an old song new. Or give us a new song from the Lord. As we enter a new year, may God overwhelm us with a new song to sing that is fueled by the wonder of who he is and our personal experience of his life and his power. So if we are going to pursue the Lord in a way that leads to deeper intimacy with him, it must be personal. Our pursuit of God must be personal, but also our pursuit of God must be intentional. I want you to look at the first part of verse 2 in Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. The word bless here is a word that means to kneel down or to praise. But there is a designation in the word bless that communicates intense action. In essence, this word is telling us not just to bless God out of habit or routine, 
We are to bless him on purpose with intensity. That's the principle that we want to talk about for a moment as it relates to being intentional in our pursuit of God. The action of blessing the Lord in verse 2 does not happen by accident. It happens because of an intentional choice to seek, praise, and bless the Lord with passion. Now, in general, there are a lot of ways that we must be intentional in our pursuit of God. We must be intentional to guard our hearts. We must be intentional to seek counsel. We must be intentional to respond to difficult times in the right way. But I want to spend just a moment talking about one area specifically, and that is how we spend our time. If we're going to pursue the Lord in the right way in this new year, we must be intentional in the way we spend our time. The only way to deepen a relationship is by choosing to invest time in that relationship. That's true in your family, it's true in your friendships, and it's true in your relationship with God. Relational depth is only possible through an investment of time. And I love how Adrian Rogers wrote about the significance of time. Here's what he said. God's great gift to you, number one, is Jesus. And number two is time. God has given you time to work, time to serve, time to love, time to laugh, time to labor. But like any gift, how you use it is really up to you. And we need to see every day, this day and every day, as a gift from God. So here's how I want to challenge you as it relates to the significance of time as we begin a new year. When it comes to your time, be intentional to give your first and your best to pursuing the Lord. As we look at a year when we could be given almost 8,800 hours, we must be intentional to make God our highest priority. Now, here's what that means. That means that we don't fill our schedule with all types of things and then decide, okay, how does God fit into this? It means we start with our pursuit of God and we give him our best and our first and then we determine, okay, how does our schedule fit around my pursuit of knowing Jesus? There is no more important aspect of the Christian life than regular time set apart to simply be with Jesus. So when it comes to our time, intentionality means investing time to be alone with God because we know that everything he desires to do through us, he will do out of the overflow of what he's doing in us. Intentionality means investing time to gather for worship with your church family because we need to hear from God together. We need to talk to God together and we need to respond to God together. Intentionality means investing time to connect in community with other Jesus followers because you need us and we need you. Your view on the significance of leveraging your time to pursue intimacy with God is critical. And I think there are really two extremes that as a society we drift toward. Let me show those to you. One one side that we drift toward is we see investing time to pursue the Lord as a longing. It's something that we know that we need and that's important. The word longing is defined this way. A strong feeling of need or desire for someone or something. 
And for some of us right now, whether you're here in the room or watching online, when you think about setting aside time to pursue God, it is a longing for you. You realize you must do it in order to live. But there's another perspective when it comes to investing time to pursue the Lord. And it's not viewing it as a longing, it's viewing it as a luxury. The word luxury is defined as something that is pleasant to have, but is not necessary. So as you think about a new year and pursuing the Lord passionately, what is your perspective on the investment of time that needs to be made to pursue intimacy with God? Do you see it as something that you long for, as a critical need in your life? Or do you see it as a luxury, something that would be good if you can get around to it? If we are going to pursue intimacy with God in a way that leads to deepening our relationship with him, we must pursue him in a personal way. We must sing to the Lord, but we must also pursue him in a way that's intentional, not by accident. Not if we get to it, but we carve out the time necessary to pursue intimacy with him. That's the first thing that I believe out of these verses we need in 2021. We need to pursue deeper intimacy with God. But Here's number two. We need to passionately join in the mission of God. We need to passionately join in the mission of God. I want you to look at the remainder of this passage of Scripture. The second part of verse 2 says this, Proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day. Tell of his glory among the nations, his wonderful deeds among all the peoples. There are two imperatives in this section of Scripture. Proclaim and tell. If you look at this passage of scripture in its totality, from verse one to verse three, you see a progression. This passage begins with worship. Sing to the Lord, sing to the Lord, sing to the Lord. But it progresses to proclaim and tell the good news among the peoples of the earth. Here's what we see in that simple explanation. A passion for the mission of God is born out of deep fellowship. God. Sing, 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 proclaim, and tell. I want to share something with you today that may make you uncomfortable, and that's okay. If you are a Jesus follower, you are a missionary. If you are a follower of Jesus, you have a relationship with God, you are a missionary. Now, some of you may think, well, pastor, I would never put myself in that category. Missionaries are people who move to another part of the world to tell people about Jesus, and that's true. But as we follow Jesus right here in the city of Las Vegas, we are also missionaries. The word missionary simply means one who is sent out. That's what it means. It means one who is sent. So thinking about that definition, I want you to look at the words of Jesus from John chapter 17. Here's what Jesus said. He's talking to his father. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them. Who's the them? God's people. Jesus is saying here, Father, as you sent me into the world as a missionary, I am also sending them, my followers, my people, my disciples, I am sending them into the world as missionaries. If you are a follower of Jesus, you have been sent into the world to join in the grand mission of God. I want to read you a challenging statement from John Phillips commentary on Psalm 96. Here's what John Phillips said. How can we 
who sit bathed in the full light of the gospel, ransomed, restored, forgiven, heaven born and heaven bound, be content to sit in our pews and sing songs while millions lie in darkness under the shadow of death with never so much as a verse of scripture in their native tongue. That's the heart of this principle. One of the things that we need more than we need anything else as we begin a new year is we need to passionately join in the mission of God. God has rescued us and he has now sent us into the world as missionaries to proclaim the hope of the gospel to others. And this has implications for us both as individuals and us as a church. Look at this application statement. God invites his people to join him by the power of his spirit in the expansion of his kingdom locally and globally. That's what the scripture is teaching us. God is inviting us as followers of Jesus to join him by the power of his Holy Spirit to expand his kingdom both locally and globally. Now, the natural question is, okay, pastor, what does that look like? Well, we see a few ways to apply that here in Psalm 96. Look at the last part of verse two. Proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day. So here's the first way we can apply this. We can join in God's mission every day where we live, where we work, and where we play. God is working and active at your job, at your school, in your neighborhood, and throughout your community. So whatever you do day to day to follow the words in verse 2, there is an opportunity there to join in the grand mission of God. But that's not all. In verse 3, he goes on to say, Tell of his glory among the nations, his wonderful deeds among all the peoples. So the first way to apply this is wherever we're doing our day today, we can join in the mission of God. But we can also join in God's mission around the world. As followers of Jesus, we're to join God's mission beyond our community, beyond our culture, and beyond our comfort zone. Verse 3 says we are to declare his deeds among all the peoples. Now this can look like you joining a team that we send around the world when we begin doing that again prayerfully very soon. This can look like you giving financially through Hope Church to touch the peoples of the earth. This can look like you praying for church planters and unreached people groups. And this can also look like you relocating your life to another context for the sake of the mission. A second thing that we need as we enter into a brand new year is we need to passionately join in the mission of God. So I hope that this truth today from Psalm 96 will remind you that there may be a lot that you want in 2021. But based off the word of God, there are definitely two things that you need. You need, I need to pursue deeper intimacy with God. And we need to passionately join in the mission of God. 